Hi, this video will teach you how to make an anemone flower, if I can say it properly, um, in white, which is what you normally see a lot of times. And then it has the black center, or you can do it with white and with the black tips, or a, a colored one. So it's your choice. So it um, there comes two different petal styles with the template. So one is a little bit more scalloped and then one is a little bit more smoother, which is this one. It doesn't have as much scallop shape to it. So either or, they're both beautiful. So I thought I'd give you both of them your choice. So you just cut three of each for one petal. So if you're using the more scalloped, cut three. If you're using the less um, scallop shape, then you would cut three. It comes with a sepal and then a leaf as well and a center. So if you are a hand cutter, you can just cut a strip. It's about six inches wide. And then all you would do, I'm going to show you with a shorter piece, is use your pinking shears or your decorative scissors and just cut along the edge here. Okay. And you would do that all the way across your long piece. Then if you're doing the white center, like here, we're going to, I need a piece of scrap paper. I'll show you with the decorative background. Put your paper down and then all you're gonna do is take your Sharpie. So I'm using a chisel point. You can use a brush point. Um, the Blick markers work well. So if you have those, so that would have a brush point at the end as well. You would just go along the edge. So this one I'll do. And you want to do both sides. So then you flip it over. And I'll show you with the Sharpie. Just make sure the tips are covered. And then either style that you're doing, you're going to take a precision scissors. You're going to have the scalloped or the sheared edge towards you. And you're going to cut to about as thin as closely as possible but leave about a quarter of an inch at the bottom roughly so it, it creates tiny little eyelashes if you cut accidentally all the way through don't worry just use both pieces just glue them together so you can see so we're going to do the same technique, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to make an all black one. Similar to this one. Okay. I have a glove on because I was going to do, I should do the center first. Let me do that so I can take my glove off. So what I do is I take a piece of stem wire, just a small piece, and a wood bead. It's about a half an inch or 15 millimeter approximately. I just put it on there and you want to use your Sharpie and you're going to paint the whole thing. If you have a paint marker and you want to do a bunch of them, if you're making a bunch of them, you can. You could use paint or spray paint them. But I found this was just as easy but you do want to put a glove on because you would get marker on yourself and go all the way around i guess i could use my wider marker but the chisel point seems to work well and these are great for our fun um, flowers when we draw on the white paper and outline our flowers like for the comic book look or the pop art look, excuse me. 
Again, we're just going all the way around. And I try and do this first, so allow the marker to dry so it doesn't get on my hands. And then you can pull it off of your stick, and I, I save that and reuse it. Go to the bottom. You can get in a little bit. What we're going to do is put it on its side so we won't see the actual hole openings, or you shouldn't. And just set that to the side and let it dry. So you can see it would be on your fingers. So. Now let's go back to our center, our eyelashes. So again, the scalloped edge or the pinking sheared edge is towards you. And this one, I do provide it all cut out like that. So you can just cut it on your favorite cutting machine. And now my lighting's not the best under here. We're gonna, again, use your um, precision scissors. So depending on what kind you have, you have the little ones, that's fine. You can, these work. All different kinds I have. I have three different kinds right here. So again, just start at the edge. Make sure the scalloped is towards you. And cut as thinly as possible. And here's a good guideline is go up to that line or as close as possible. It's fine. Sometimes I go further than the other one. Just watch your fingers. So you're just trying to keep them very, very thin. So you don't want, I do have the, um, what are those called? The other scissors, oh. the fringe scissors, but these are too wide. So you don't want to, we don't want to use that because we need them super duper thin. And if you see that one's too wide, you can always go back and cut, cut it in half. And I'm just going to keep going all the way across. I wouldn't do multiple sheets of paper. This is 65 pound cardstock. And so was the white where we did the tips. So either way you're doing the center, you're doing the exact same thing. I was just showing you on a smaller piece of paper how I did the black tip. So depending on what look you're going for, I know some of them, when I was looking them up for images, they were more green and not like with the black tips. So you could just do that with a lighter green or with ink. So look at some images. I have a terrible time saying the name of this flower. Anemone. <laughs> I always want to say out of mind. Thank goodness for Google for the pronunciations. Again, try and go as close as possible. Be sure to be under good, good lighting. That does help. And again, this is six inches wide. So if you are hand cutting, again, just cut a rectangle six inches wide by one inch um, height. Use your pinking shears to do the edge or your decorative scissors. I was like, oh, I need to buy pinking shears. And I was like, um, I have those scissors from a long time ago. So this is probably the most time consuming part. 
I would probably, again, do this in stages like I normally do if I'm making a bunch of them, is I would color all the center wood balls. Now you don't have to use like a wood bead. If they come in black, that's great. Um, but you could um, use a tin foil ball and cover it with um, black paper. Oops, I almost cut through with black paper if you want. I just found this to be super duper easy. And I had a bunch of them in all different sizes. Some of mine got a little wide. It says where if you wear glasses or reading glasses, Probably a good idea to have them on. I think we're pretty good. Again, try and get them as super thin as possible. So some of mine were a little bit wide, but there in the beginning I did really well. So either way, if you're doing the white center or if you want the solid black center like here or even the small one it's all made the same exact way so we have our center and this so now you take your bone folder or you can use your um your Cricut scraper tool just be careful and just curl it towards the center Now, holding it here, we're going to flip that on its side. Oop. <laughs> it's going to roll away. Let me move my scissors out of the way. We're going to add a little bit of glue to get it started. Okay. Oops. So flip it on its side so the hole is on the side because we want to see it from the top with no hole. And then wrap it towards you. And we're going to just add some more glue. And I do have a little bit of the ball sticking out, which is fine. And I press down just a little bit and then we'll shape it. So we're just going to let it sit there and dry for a little bit. And we would do the exact same thing for the white one. So depending on what look you want. For our petals, we're going to shape those now. So we're going to take our flower shaping mat. I'm using a super small one. <laughs> it's like a miniature one. We're going to take them individually. You're going to take your metal ball stylus, and this is um, not the smallest one, but the next size. And you're just going to trace around the petal, and then I just go back and forth just to give it some texture around the edge. Should lift the petal up and then back and forth around the edge and then almost like color it in and we're going to do this for all three petals so around and color just giving a little bit of texture we're still going to do some more styling to it. Did I get them all? Yep. Yeah. 
Again, all three petals style the same way. Go around each one so you're outlining it and then you're coloring it in. Go around the edge and color in. Okay, stack all three, or actually no. <laughs> we're gonna hold them. So with the petals, just the way they were, we're gonna hold them and we're gonna use the bone folder and shape them back. Okay, set it down, lift it up just the way we did it. After we use our metal ball stylus, hold it at the base. It's almost like when you're doing ribbon. We want to shape it back a little. Ooh. Now you can stack all three. We're going to take a dowel rod. We don't want it curled too much. This is like a quarter of an inch. So you can see they're curved backwards. Flip it over and we're gonna curl it under. Or I'm gonna curl it up, but once it's done, it's under. I just find it easier to curl this way. You don't want it to have a lot of curl and we'll open it up. So place your dowel rod down in the middle of the pedal, thumb on top, index finger underneath, pinch it up on the right and roll it. Thumb on top, index finger underneath, pinch it up and roll. Okay, so now you have all three. Flip them over so that, oops, I think I forgot to do one. That the petals are rolled under. Now we're gonna take our first one and you can flatten them just a little bit. We're going to use that same tool, the metal ball stylus and size that we use to shape the petal and roll the center. And set it down. Grab your next one. Roll your center. And we're going to flatten those just a little bit. And we're going to glue them. So add glue to the bottom of one, just there in the center, a nice amount. Look for a petal and place it in between. So try and stand directly over top and then press down. You can use your metal ball stylus to make sure it adheres. And now we're going to just flatten them a little bit. And this is Nina Bright White, 65 pound cardstock, and it's from Walmart or your I purchased it on Amazon in a pack of 250. Stir your center. And now we're going to flip it over, add some glue. Try and stand directly over top of it. Look up petal and place it in between layer two's petal. Press down. And then I just flatten them just a little bit. Now let's work on styling our leaf so we have that ready to go and we can actually add that now. So I take a super thin stylus tool. You can get these at um, Dollar Tree. I don't know if this particular one is. I think these are from there. So you just need it to be super thin or you just use the smallest in the metal ball stylus. This one just adds a little bit more detail and then you can also pierce through it. So I just draw a line down the center of each of my leaves and then I go in towards them with veining. 
can see that because you can see that there's a texture then on the back. So again, down each leaf, I do a line and then come in towards the center. Turn it, align, and then towards the center. And you can see it kind of curls the leaf up as you're pulling towards yourself. So always that center line and then towards, do little lines towards that center line. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's just to give it some texture. It's underneath. And if we were stemming it, we would do this a little bit differently. Okay. So now I also like to take a little bit wider and just go down the center of each of them. And that lifts the petal up even more. See how it cupped it up? And if you turn it over, you can see the veining that it looks like a real leaf. You can also um, pinch the edges. I like to do that sometimes. You can roll them too or use your tweezers. But it's just as effective just to pinch them with your hand. Because leaves are usually crumbled up somehow. <laughs> So we're going to um, flip this over. We're going to add glue and then glue it here. It's a good point to add it before you get your center. I've done it after my center, but a lot easier it's flatter right now and then there are individual leaves you would do the same exact technique is down the center of each do your lines towards them again i'm not thinking about it i'm just doing some quick lines i take my little bit wider one oops too wide and down the center and then sometimes I'll go over it. And these can be extra leaves if you were stemming it or just in your project. So you could cut them if you need it or even if you didn't want to use the back sheeple. All right, so now let's have some fun with the center. We're going to take this. And we're going to peel it apart. I'm just going down to the wood bead and pulling it back. And you're just going to shape it. And I just keep playing with it. Pull some of the little lashes out. Try and get some of the back ones. So yes, we curled it in, but we're going to pull them out. Because we want them to have that little bit of curved shape. Usually hold it away from me so I can see it. We want it to be open in the center so we can, the optional part of adding some color, some pollen.
Okay. So once you think you have it, and you can shape it once it's in, or we glue it in the center. Because I could fiddle around with it all day long. I'm going to add some glue. Try and get it there in the center. I'm going to let it sit here so it adheres. Let it dry. I'm just going to let it sit there. Let that dry a moment. So for the coloring, for like the darker ones, if you were doing the red or purple, I use white pan pesto. But for our smaller, or I'm sorry, for our white flowers, a lot of the anemone flowers have um, a, lot, a green tint to them. So I am using pan pastels. I have a a set that I purchased. It's 20 colors on here. And I am using the yellow green, which for me, it should be on the bottom. Yes. So in this set, it came with all of these. And we're also gonna use some black to add back in. So again, this is in the set. So I just leave them stacked the way they are and then we have it out. Okay. So now that our center dried, it's adhered in there. It's super pretty just like that. So if you wanted to stop there, that's fine. I use Dollar Tree brushes and we're gonna take some green and I do have a tissue over here, but let's use our scrap paper. And you can just brush it on there if you feel like it's too much or not enough. And we're just gonna go right here where it meets, like the creases. And I'm just dabbing it in there. And then you can brush it up a little. Okay. Need one that's a little bit tighter, but so now we're going to go down in each of the creases, just kind of paint it up. Just for some added color. So if you look at those images, you can see the hints of that lime green. And you can use any color green if you wanted a sagey green. I like this contrast. Okay, and then I go down to my next layer and I look for where the petals meet. And I do the same, just a little bit, depending on what you're using them for. because you can see where these two petals meet, it went already underneath there. So now if you wanted to go all the way down to the bottom, you can, and I usually do, just kind of go around just in the, where the petals meet. So I find it's much easier to do it here. You can just kind of paint it on. Okay, 
Then I use the black just to go over my ball a little. So if I thought it got too green there or now if I lost too much green. We have our leaf. So again, you can use these and glue them on if you wanted to. But there is the anemone flower. Have fun making them. They're a lot of fun and beautiful.